Centonia. Hi and welcome to the Ruby Tuesday. My name is Ruben and this is my review for Netflix's original Brazilian series called Centonia. And I don't know why I'm doing it like this, like in Italian. Centonia. Not even the right accent or language. So Sintonia is about three childhood friends, Nando, Donnie and Rita. They take different paths in their teens, but despite trying to distance themselves from their Sao Paulo, Brazil backgrounds, they ultimately must rely on one another to avoid self-destruction. This is one of the main things that I really like about Netflix. I love their original series. Some are a bit better than others, obviously, and depending on your taste, maybe you don't generally go into the non-English speaking. If you're from the UK or, or America or elsewhere where English is the, the main language, then maybe you, you're kind of have avoided some of the series that are in other languages. But for me, I love to see what else is in there, different cultures, different storylines. It keeps it fresh, it keeps it interesting. Some of my favorite series on Netflix at the moment are the non-speaking non-speaking ones. Wow, that'd be different. The non-English speaking ones. So there's Black Spot, Rain, Dark, Diablo, there are so many that I've really enjoyed and they've been unique and fresh. Sometimes they rival some of the best English speaking ones. And so whenever there's a new series, I jump at the chance to see what it could be, whether it's any good. And so Syntonia dropped and I checked it out. It's only six episodes long and they're about 45 minutes each. It took me a while to be invested into these characters because I found it hard to relate. Obviously, it's not my demographic. It, it's for young teens in Brazil. In this, in this, It's set in the slums. And so I thought, wow, will I be able to relate to this? And it took me a couple of episodes to get into it, but I eventually did. This is not the first time Netflix has done a Brazilian Netflix TV series. There's 3% and I believe a couple of others. But this is a very different tack for them. The creators have gone on record saying they wanted to ground it. So even though it's about music and religion and uh, drugs, they wanted to really ground the story within these three characters. And I think for the most part, the acting is quite good. I, I was engaged with, after probably the first two episodes, I was kind of into the story. I think some, other, some of the actors are stronger than others. There's the one lead who's an MC and he wants to be involved in music. And so the driving force around kind of the, the main arc of Syntonia is this kid who wants to get into music and in real life in the real world um he's actually got quite a following and he is an mc and so i, I don't know anything about his music but sometimes it can be a, a, an interesting choice to say to take someone that is in music and then place them in um in an acting role to play that same part and it doesn't always work but i think he was quite engaging in parts i, I feel very mixed on this series because there are times when there are some really great acting chops chops <laughs> some really great acting moments felt like the, the actors were coming into their own probably midway i really saw some scenes that i thought wow this is great there was a, a a sex scene that was interesting because the dynamic of that sex scene was the the woman was crying she was she was wondering what's going to happen with her family and see this tear so she's obviously having sex and enjoying that but there's this tear and it adds an emotional death that I wasn't expecting to some of that. But then on in contrast, there are a couple of actors in this that are just awful that made me want to switch off the series completely and not watch it. I just I was watching and I was like, I couldn't believe that it was possible. There there there's a one particular female character, not a protagonist, but in a kind of a background sub character that I thought this woman should not be playing that role. She's not believable, comes off cheesy. And then sometimes the, the, the dialogue did come off cheesy. Um, maybe that's because the culture and the demographic is different and it's not for me. But there, I did feel like there was this contrast in story. When I was watching, I didn't know whether I should be involved or invested in certain characters. And then they went and did things that I thought were counterintuitive to how they were written. There are some, I would say, faux pas for filming and directing in this as well. There's a scene where the cops have doing a patrol and they interrogate one of these uh, one of the main characters, uh, the, the the one that's going into drugs. Well, that's his life, into crime. And he's trying to talk to this main character. And the one of the worst things, I've seen it done many times in TV series and films, where the character looks at something somewhere where he shouldn't look at. And I know my wife and I and many other people talk about this a lot when uh, the character does something like, why are you doing that? Why would you give away that position? And I think that's that's bad directing. In real life, you would avoid 
all eye contact and all movement. And that's just a little nitty gritty thing. I thought, ah, oh, why is that in here? At first, I didn't feel like Santonio took any chances in, in its direction, in its cinematography, in its acting. But towards the latter episodes, I felt like it was coming into its own. That the because the director had, or the creators had, insisted on grounding the story and the 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 story behind it was this is what it's actually like and the question i felt like the the story was asking that the creators wanted to get across like what would you do if you were born into this lifestyle if you didn't really have a choice how do you avoid going into into crime or avoid just that kind of lifestyle how do you bring forth your dreams how do you bring forth your dreams and go for them when you're in a poverty state and I thought that question to ask with these three characters does come across and and I thought that was probably the strongest point of Sintonia um, its story and its arc I don't think the acting is great and I don't think the cinematography is brilliant although there were times at the night shoots particularly I thought well that looks pretty good uh, but there was nothing that blew me away within the acting there were some good scenes and there was some good cinematography i think probably the strongest when the strongest thing when it comes to this series in filming i think is probably the score it plays a big part within these six episodes and obviously there's this emceeing and i think it, it brings a freshness that i think that the demographic it's aiming for uh, will like i enjoyed most of it it's not something that i think i w would want to continue watching if it has more seasons it's like okay i've done it i've seen what they're doing there it's definitely not my my demographic but i thought it was interesting nonetheless it does come across a bit like a soap drama at times mixed in with some of the violence and things that you would get in i guess that lifestyle and so it does come across as a bit of a soap i don't know that maybe is the culture and the way uh, TV series and uh, films maybe are presented in Brazil because I haven't seen many Brazilian TV shows or series. So I think at times it's quite weak, but at times it's quite good. So I, I'm going to go down the middle of the path for our rating because that's just how I feel after watching the six episodes. I think the leads are okay. It, it's 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 okay. That's probably the best. <laughs> I know that doesn't sound great. It's not terrible. It's not bad. It's okay. So I'm going to give this a C. Please don't be offended by my rating. That's just my opinion from a white guy in the UK who's seen the six episodes and it's probably my not my demographic and it probably isn't for me. That's just my personal opinion. Maybe you loved it. Let me know in the comments below and I'm happy to chat to you there. To keep my Netflix channel growing and turn this into a business, instead of doing a Patreon, I'm doing the YouTube membership. So I do one live stream a month and I do a few reviews earlier before I release them on my main channel. And then I will do some kind of behind the scene things because I think if you, you are loving my channel and my content and you want a bit more, a bit extra, then there is that. So I will still obviously post as frequently as I do and all my best content is there, but there are some extra, extra things behind the scenes some extra live commentary that I'll do sometimes. Uh, definitely once a month, a few reviews before, a few days before they come out because I get that from Netflix sudden, sometimes. So if you want to support my channel and help me that way and you want some extra content, then think about maybe uh, joining my membership. I'm working on a really interesting documentary right now, which I'm very excited about. It's going to be exclusive on YouTube. It's a secret, secret project that I'm working on, um, but I'm just going to keep giving you a bit more information as it goes on, as I build it. And hopefully in the next few months, I will release that. But most of all, until next time, remember, live long and Tuesday.